All right. So today we're looking at the body paragraphs of our synthesis essay. Let's go back to our learning target and make sure that we're on track. Uh, we are learning to construct a coherent essay that synthesizes information from three or more sources. They have to be what kind of sources? Credible, Credible sources to defend a chosen position on a controversial topic. And our topic is? Artificial intelligence. We're doing this by analyzing a variety of sources through Socratic seminar and exploring the messy process of writing through a shared writing activity. I hold the pen. You tell me what to write. The first body paragraph I will walk you through. The second we'll do together. The third you're going to do on your own. By then you should have the process down. So, and we are doing this in order to provide scaffolded practice, just like I just said. I'll do one, we'll do one together, and then you'll be on your own to practice by yourself. Create ownership and a deep understanding of exemplary writing. We want to make our writing the best it can be. Build vocabulary and rich language, making sure we're not using just simple vocabulary, that we're speaking with an intelligent voice. Provide immediate feedback, not only from me, but from one another during this Socratic seminar. And create assessment opportunities through the observation of the successes and struggles not seen throughout the independent writing process. I put this one on here for me because I wanted you to see how you're going to be graded for this activity. I'm going to watch this step-by-step -step process. I'm going to see where you shine and where you struggle. So when we have our next writing activity, I can focus on those struggles and try to help you overcome them before the AP writing test. We will know we can do this when we construct a complete synthesis essay that includes a strong and clear statement of position, your thesis, we've done that, arguable, defendable claims, we're working on that, the second one, embedded evidence that supports position and defends your claims, we have learned how to take chunks of quotes instead of using the whole quotation and embed them with our own voice, uh, let's see, evidence from a variety of credible sources, we've used four. Uh, proper citations of each piece of evidence, and we have done that, source D, source F, source E, or we could use the author's last name. Uh, relevant commentary, we're working on that especially right now. Concessions and counter arguments with thorough refutations, we're going to get there. And respond in full to the given. Let's prompt. review our introductory paragraph. We said... Degeneration primed and ready to run governments, manage businesses, and enforce laws has been inundated by technology since birth. What would happen if that same technology on which they have become so dependent simply disappeared or worse, tried to take over? Could this generation of humans remain in power without modern conveniences? Would they falter, allowing an opening for a more sophisticated and intelligent form of artificial intelligence, AI, to take control? Kasparov, a chess champion who lost to an AI opponent, believes that technology liberates us from tedious labors, making our lives better and more free. And that's in Source A. Okorafor, a science fiction writer, is under the impression that technology keeps us safe and allows for order. From Source D. Popcorn, a strategic consultant, holds the dual view that while technology provides easier and faster diagnosis in the field of medicine, we could easily be replaced by AI in the workforce. And that's from source E. Ito, head of the MIT Media Lab, views technology as user controlled and states that without ethical and moral grounding as part of the programming of AI, technology could amplify the worst aspects of our society. And that's from source C. And that is where we learn to integrate those sources and to embed that evidence. Does technology truly improve our quality of life by making our lives easier and less tedious? affording us more time to ponder and plan for our future endeavors, or does it hinder our development by thinking for us and making us unable to think for ourselves? Based on current opinions of experts from our sources, and in, excuse me, let me start over. Based on the current opinions of experts in the various fields of technology and in the experience of modern man, AI is seen to improve the quality of life of humans on personal, biological, and professional levels. So we have incorporated all of that evidence, all of our sources that we have deemed worthy of going into our paper, and we have written our introduction. So now we're moving on to the body paragraph. So the first thing that we need to do is state our first claim. And our first claim needs to have something to do with daily life. So we're going to start it like this. 
In daily life, artificial intelligence works with humans and for humans to help us complete tedious, time-consuming chores and jobs that require more strength, skill, or precision than a human can muster on his own. All right? Look in your sources. Can you find evidence that goes with AI working for and with humans in everyday life? Source D. And what in source D? Uh, something engineer. The robots have rotating tests that enable them to do the job of four traffic lights. They also equip with cameras that record and monitor drivers. These robot traffic cops move around the clock and argue left by robots. Okay, robot traffic cops. And how did they help? They direct traffic. They direct traffic. And who are they keeping safe? Right. Um, and a little background on this. There's a school on that street and their bus stop is across this road from their school. So most of these are school age children that were crossing the road. What other source can give us? Uh, source A says we use machines to make new things, solve new problems and create whole industries that we can't even imagine. He uses the chess. Uh, because the author was the person that played against the online, the AI chess game. Okay, and what does he say positive about it? Uh, he also mentions like later on that because of this, you can use AI to. Um, he says liberate us from tedious labor. Liberate. Okay, and that was one thing that we even said in our introduction. Is there another source? Remember, we need three. Source E. Source E. Translation apps are on the verge of making real conversations flow around the globe. Watson, the IBM supercomputer, may have saved a Tokyo woman's life with diagnosing her with a rare leukemia. All right. So we have three different sources. And amazingly enough, you picked the exact three things that I picked. So y'all are on the right track. Let's look at how I worded this so we can see how we're going to wor word the one that we're going to do together. So the first one that I picked was humans have become very good at teaching machines how to do our jobs, which affords us the opportunity to be more imaginative and more imaginative and more ambitious. And that was in source A, solve problems, create industries and liberate us. All right. Do you see in source A where he says those things? Yes, and I have put the source here. I have cited it properly by using source A in parentheses. You could also put his last name in parentheses if you would like. And then my commentary, we have to explain why we think this. Give some real world examples. Boring and messy daily chores like vacuuming and cleaning a kitty's litter box can now be outsourced to robots like the Roomba and the pet safe scoop free self cleaning litter box. So your commentary needs to provide direct examples and explanations. The next one I use, police in some Af Africa's most congested and dangerous cities have employed giant locally made humanoid robots on the most accident prone roads where they keep traffic down and drivers and pedestrians safe. And that is in source D, the same one that you picked for directing traffic. The commentary on that one. Streets that were once clogged by drivers dodging potholes and pedestrians, mostly school-aged children, dodging speeding and swerving cars to reach a bus stop are now managed and order maintained by an unbiased robot. So we give a further explanation of that in our commentary. Now the last one I picked, in our virtual connected world, Maybe you can see it all. In our virtual connected world, robots alleviate loneliness and apps perform translations of any language, making real-time communications flow around the globe. And that was source E, the same one that you picked. And my commentary, it is no secret that our world is shrinking, allowing for human-to-human -human connections that were once impossible due to the separation of great distances. Now people can connect to anywhere around the globe at the touch of a button. All right? And then we have to give our summary of proof. And this is what I was talking about uh, by the summary of proof. It kind of wraps it all up into a nice little package. 
As humans create and explore more diverse technologies, the distance between us shrinks, bringing us closer to one another and allowing us to coexist safely in an ever-connected world unburdened by menial work and requirements and boring duties of daily life. So do you see how I took all those three sources and kind of compacted them into one sentence and just wrapped it all up in a nice, neat little package? That's what we're going to do for body paragraph two. So what do we want to talk about in body two? What is going to be our claim? We've already done the daily life, so we've touched them uh, interacting with us on a personal level. What were the two other things in the introduction that I said we were going to talk about? Biological and professional. We probably need to save the professional for last since that's where a lot of our counter arguments are coming in because our big major argument against AI is that it's going to take over. Okay, So we should probably go with the biological aspect. And what do I mean by biological? Give me some examples of what biological could be. Like said, faster diagnosis in medicine. Faster diagnosis in medicine? What else? Look in your sources and see where they talk about the body and the mind and how AI can influence that. Petrie? Like, uh, Popcorn and Sorsky said that there are robots like RoboBear, which is a bear like nursing care assistant, can help to alleviate loneliness when our lifespan will stretch out to 150 years. Yes, how long is that lifespan? 150. So not only will we have the quicker diagnosis and these AI people, bears, to keep us company, but it's going to extend our lives to 150 years with better medical technologies, better medicines, better ways to cure diseases. All right? Can you find another source? Another source at our high life, we started using algorithms to help us predict two behaviors, showing the right products to our customers before they even know what they want and providing them. The right marketing copy to the person to buy. So we have the predictive, let's just call it predictive apps, okay, to improve quality of life. She says it specifically there to improve quality of life. Is there another one? Now, when we went through these sources, we highlighted the negatives in one color and we highlighted the positives in another color. So focus on our positive colors for now. Source C about the robot traffic cops. How it said these robot traffic cops work around the clock and are be loved by locals and don't accept rides. Okay. Yeah, we can't work around the clock because we'll get tired and fall asleep. Now, which source was that? D. Uh, it's D. Well, yeah, D. So we can start this off by notifying a change of direction. Not only is AI helpful in our daily life. But it is also what? It says health. Could we say well being? Yeah. Okay. So not only does AI help in our daily lives. And that says, we're off of the daily life topic, we're moving on to something else, but it also improves our, did you say mental and physical? Yeah. Mental and physical well-being. Which piece of evidence would you like to use first? Which source? Source F. All right, so we need to come up with a statement about what Source F says. And remember, we don't want to just quote the whole thing. We want to include the important parts mixed in with our We're going to open that. We can open it with the quotation marks. Predictive apps do what? Help save time and make more discerning purchases. Help save time and <clears throat> make more 
discerning purchases. <coughs> now, that's the opening of our sentence. What can we say in our own voice to tie it back to mental and physical well-being? Basically, with the app saying that it like helps you save time and stuff, like you can you can, be, you can say like, oh, I'm already done with this, so I can move on to something else, so you won't be in a rush, like when everything's clumped up and you have so much to do in your schedule. You wouldn't, like, yeah, you wouldn't have stress. Less stress, yeah. <laughs> less stress time. Relieving <laughs> stress <laughs> from. The now, we need another word for many. We need a better word than many. Can you think of a better word than many? Various. What do you say? Various, multiple. Another word than many. Various, multiple. Vast. There's also plethora, myriad. Okay, so which one do we want to use? Vast, various, multiple, plethora, myriad, plethora, from the plethora of choices available to modern consumers. And that is from source what? F. So yesterday we got through <coughs> most of our we do body paragraph. We're working through this one together. We already had our introduction. We already had paragraph one. Now we're working through paragraph two together. Let's revisit this one more time. So we are constructed. Let's get back to work on body paragraph three. We were at our last piece of commentary. And the evidence that we had was supercomputers like Watson make life-saving medical diagnoses like the Tokyo woman's rare leukemia when doctors couldn't, and human companion robots like RoboBear alleviate loneliness when our lifespan stretches to 150. And that was from source E. So as medical technology advances and, say again what you said. It's like, I think it's just going to expand, like make the, our lifespan go further because we'll be able to detect things easier. Or a higher survival rate. And humans, yeah. pardon? Our lives become longer. Okay. And human lives grow longer. So we have the model paragraph. And it goes through everything that we've already gone through. The topic sentence, all the pieces of evidence, all of the commentary. Look at that summary of proof. And how can you make a summary of proof for this evidence that is similar to the one for body paragraph one? So guess what we do now? Ah, oh, body paragraph three. So I've done one. We did two together. So guess what's going to happen next? Oh, y'all are going to have to do this one by yourselves. So you already have the, the handout, the graphic organizer that tells you to put your claim first, put your evidence, your commentary, where your summary of proof goes, and all of that. So this is going to depend on you. And this is where our Socratic seminar skills come in. We've all done Socratic seminar before. Okay? So we know that we have to talk to each other, speak clearly so everyone can hear us, back up our claims with evidence, and be kind and courteous and not speak over each other. All right? So, you have your handout in front of you. Now it's my time to step back and let you have fun with this. All right. Isn't there, um, which, which, which source was it where it talks about how there's, technology takes away a job, uh, but then... It's the one with the medical... Yeah, like, it takes away a job, but then three more are created the next day whenever it breaks or something. Like four six. No. I don't think. Well, I think it's four six. Yeah. yeah, there's something in four six. Oh, four six. Four six. He also says um, it's possible that thousands of us will be robo replaced 
Oxford University reports that 47% of workers in the United States will be automated into unemployment within two decades. Okay. So that, that's a good counter argument. Yeah, that would be good for the um, counter argument one. We can do that in the very very soon. The good news is that intelligent machines also liberate us from tedious labor, letting us be more imaginative and more ambitious. Although, of course, one person is liberated is another person is unemployed, at least in the short term. I like the, uh, says, and on the very next day, it probably created new jobs when three people were needed to fix it. Like after it talks about how machines have been replacing humans since the first one was invented many thousands of years ago. Oh, where is that? It's a third person. Oh. Yeah. Are we going to use that? I like that one. Let's figure out what our plan is. <laughs> well, we have to say AI, because in our introduction we said AI is aimed to improve quality of life and personal biological and professional levels. So we have to kind of like restate that point. Mm You could say, like, since you're fine, like, in addition to personal and biological lines, AI also, um, also aids humans in their professional life or something like that. Professional, like, you know, that's a professional field. Yeah. Aid humans by creating new jobs to improve. And then kind of causing us to adapt by filling in jobs, so now, this isn't really a professional way of saying it, but by them, like, taking new, like, they do our jobs for us, now it's faster, so you get stuff easier, but now you're also going to need the people behind those machines to take care of it and build it, so that makes you have to kind of adapt and get smarter. Yeah, that would be good evidence to come. Yeah, that would be good evidence, but like this is really good point. It's like, I think it would be working like, as well as like, it like, says yeah. uh, like the job like machines will take our current jobs, but then it says that since we'll be more ambitious. So I feel like that'll open up new opportunities later since the machines are taking care of our old jobs. Uh, in, in addition to biological and personal life, what else? What else you said? Um, this is a that also like uh, helps. <laughs> I don't want to use the word helps, but like it helps us Assist. professionally. Aids. Like aids. 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 What was your word? Assist. Assist. And then you could say like bring in what she was saying, making us more ambitious and. I don't know if this is all that great, but I have, in addition to personal and biological life, AI assists humans in professional life, making them more ambitious and creative, and allowing for efficiency in the workplace. We like it? All right, what's next? I think here we should just talk about, like, how Trevor was saying earlier, how um, it makes us more ambitious, and, like, how we said in the claim, and we have to talk about the effectiveness, too, okay. efficiency of it. In source A, in the second paragraph, it says, the good news is that intelligent machines also liberate us from tedious labor, letting us become more imaginative, imaginative and, and more ambitious. But then, more our counter argument, we could just use this. Although, of course, person liberated, one person liberated, liberated is another person unemployed. I'm thinking we introduce it like because we already mentioned that it like <coughs> liberates us from tedious labor. Like we could introduce it like that, <coughs> like wow. while it liberates us. I don't want to say liberates us from tedious labor. Cause that's saying exactly what the source says. So like paraphrase. That. Something like that, it also allows us to be more imaginative and more ambitious. It's not over tedious. That's a good word. What did you say again? Mundane. Yeah. Mundane. Monotonous. Monotonous. It's your, it's your choice here. It's our word choice here. Which one do we want to use? You can say like monotonous. monotonous. Yeah. Okay. So they, so intelligent machines prevent us from performing monotonous labor. 
Oh, do they prevent us? I'm saying while AI takes over, but not in this task, it also um, allows us to be like in quotes more imaginative and more ambitious. Perfect. Perfect. Well, AI takes over monotonous tasks. Uh, it also allows us to be more imaginative, imaginative and more ambitious. That last part. The more imaginative and ambitious part. Yeah. So we can say like the commentary there. Um, like with that ambition and imagination, uh, like new. Not that you, I don't want to say that we get more machines and stuff, but like it introduces the things that we never thought we could have in our human life, like all the new inventions and things. I said, like, I said, since humans will not be bothered by the similar task, we, we can focus more on expanding culture. Keep going on. That's kind of what I was trying to say. I guess like the imag- imagination and vision, I think that's more towards like. <laughs> Without tedious tasks, you can do more things towards like, like you, like you said, like we could expand more AI or we could expand more culture or whatever way you want to go with that. So, can you say what you have on the time? So that since humans will not be bothered by the simple task, we can focus more on expanding culture and more, uh, like how on your part you said, and more on expanding AI. I think of something like how they work around the clock, so it's something that humans can't do. Like, we can't work on the pond because we need less and it would eliminate the need for, like, the danger of working, like, in the night or something like that. But I don't know if you really talked about that earlier, apparently. Yeah. What about the financial aspect of that? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, because, like, it... Oh, yeah. like, there'll be, there'll be money. There'll be money. <laughs> no, the thing is, like, oh, air, again, traffic is lighter, and then, like, prob- what probably is probably going to keep climb down, and then go that area, and then do stuff around it. So in that area, things are start getting better, and then more places will go up, because there's less time, and then, like, And also, how many people would you have to pay to work in a 24-hour period, eight-hour shift? You would have to pay three people to do what the job of the one robot could do. So how much money would that save? They could be applied to museums. And save money for one. Day. Yeah. And so they, and that, it's like she said in that aspect, instead of the, the city or the state, you know, whoever pays is having to pay three people X amount of dollars for working eight hours and three shifts, you know, you pay just the electricity basically for the robot. So you're saving money. Well, these are solar power robots. Oh, then you're not even paying the electricity. Pay so you don't have to pay that. So you have more money. You pay one guy to maintain it, make sure he's clean. Yeah. So you have more money to give towards like different things from the, the state or how you want to work out. So that's pretty much your evidence and commentary all in one day. Um, the expansion of AI in the professional world. Yeah, yeah, that's a good introduction. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Turn. With the expansion of AI in the professional world, I like that. Humans can what? Humans can. Humans can focus on mm. bigger things. Yeah, you say expansion better. in the areas yeah. of economy. Um, what was other? That we mentioned. Culture. Yeah. Economy, culture, and. Uh, allows us more time to be socially connected. And social connection. There you go. <laughs> now, one thing I want to point out at this point we know that we're going into our reputation paragraph next. Should we just stop it here and jump into the reputation paragraph? Or should we put something here about that reputation? You want to lead into it. it. So we would say something like, but, or however. Or we could use the, um, some people say otherwise. Okay, well, I want you to think about it. We'll come back to this little addition that we're talking about later. Now, what I'm giving you before you leave, these are examples of reputation.
refutation paragraphs and conclusion paragraphs pulled from the AP exam. D scored eight or nine on the AP exam. Take these home, look at them, and come back with some ideas of how you would like to conclude this essay and do the refutations in our next paragraph. Understood?